Due to poor wireless connection, it's here. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? This your man, Chris Watts. If you've seen all my uh, pre-recorded videos I'll be posting, you know what I say. This your man, Chris Watts, your big brother from another mother. <laughs> Off top, man, you know we got to give God the glory and the honor. You know, I got to recognize my beautiful queen who is here with me, Allie, and uh, my three beautiful girls. So I just wanted to come on tonight, man. If you're coming on, thank you for coming on. I know it's, what, 8, 8.53, my time, Central. And um, so I know it's a, probably a little late, so I won't I won't uh, be long. I won't try to be long. <laughs> but it's been a minute since your boy been on live, man. And um, and uh, you know we just been staying focused, doing what God called us to do. And uh, but I said I'm gonna start back coming on, doing teachings, and uh, praying for you guys. You know, moving prophetically or whatnot. And tonight I was just uh, a few minutes ago I was just putting my girls to bed. You know, and um. You know, I just began to think about some things, and I said, hey, I'm going to tell my uh, wife, I said, hey, Leash, I'm uh, going to go live here in a few minutes. And she like, what? What you going to talk about? I said, I'm just going to talk about something. Just want to encourage the people before they go to sleep. So I want to give you guys a, a quick nine never nightly nugget, man. And um, like I said, thank you for tuning in. I value your time, so I'm not going to be long. Please share the broadcast. Please share the broadcast. Please share this with your people. With your friends, with your mama them, your cousin them, every them. <laughs> Share it with your people, man, okay? So, um, for the sake of time, let's get to it. And uh, my lap, my uh, computer here is freezing up right here. I want to be able to see, see your comments and see you guys talking back to me. So, as you guys know, if you haven't heard before, anytime I do a teaching, whether live or whether um, on Facebook Live or uh, at the local lo local assembly or speaking at an event or whatnot, I try to do the five E's, right? I try to let my message be with the five E's. The first one, I want it to be effective because we want the message to impact you, right? The second E is educational. We want you to learn. We want to teach. Uh, the third E is exciting. You guys know, hey, uh, you know you know your boy stay crunk. You know I stay lit. Now, I stay on the 100 ready to go. I'm going to try to keep it calm tonight because I just put my girls to bed. They need to be asleep, all right? But who knows what happened? The fourth E is uh, entertaining. You know, your boy love to laugh. I love to make y'all laugh. And uh, the last E is engaging. So as we doing this live, hey, talk back to your boy. Let me see what you're saying in the comments about what we want to share tonight. So let's get to it. I titled this message, well, not message, but I titled this uh, uh, Facebook live. I said, uh-oh, help me. Satan knows my word. <laughs> oh, I can feel it right now, Jesus. <laughs> I said, help me. Satan knows my word. And I'm going to just try to talk mostly calm tonight. And so, because I just really want you guys to get what I'm about to say. You guys have to understand that uh, I believe everyone that's watching this and that we'll watch has a great destiny and uh, have a great future. And that uh, God has thoughts and plans and he wants to take you to an expected end. And during the course of your journey and your purpose, God will lead you and he will guide you and he, and he will speak prophetic words to you to lead and guide you along your journey, right? To make sure you stand in the right position, to make sure that you're on course, make sure you're not getting off course. He speaks prophetically to confirm what it is he has already spoken to you. He speaks to, uh, prophetically to, uh, uh, to, keep, to keep your hope and your expectation alive. The Bible says that uh, a good word in a due season is like a tree of life. And hope deferred makes the heart sick. What do, you, what, what do you do when you know God spoke something to you two years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and it seemed like you ain't heard nothing from him since? <laughs> Well, what do you do when God is giving you a word and then all of a sudden God goes silent? Woo! And, 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 and those are the times when that scripture comes into play that a, a good word in due season is like a tree of life and, and hope deferred makes the heart sick. Anybody, anybody just been needing some hope lately and you like, God, I need, just need to hear something. Your boy struggling right now. Your girl, God, I, I just need some strength. Get, show me some type of hope right now, God. Well, I just we want to come on and we want and we want to give you some encouragement, man, and let you know that God has not forgotten about you. 
And that even during the times when God is silent, he is still moving on your behalf. And you have nothing to worry about because when God releases his word, as he said in Isaiah, when he releases his word, when God speaks prophetically over you, you have to understand that that word, he says, shall not return back to him void. But it shall accomplish. But, and this leads into what I titled this uh, Facebook Live for tonight. Help me. Satan knows my word. <laughs> you have to understand that when God releases a prophetic word into your life, when God releases direction and guidance and clarity into your life, you have to understand that you are not the only one that hears that word. Help me. Satan knows my word. <laughs> you have to understand that when God releases and speaks to you prophetically, once again, you are not the only one that hears that word. You have to understand that you have an enemy, an adversary that walk around as a roaring lion. And, and, and when God releases, your, releases that word to you, when God speaks to you, you have to understand that just as you heard it, Satan hears it as well. And the thing that Satan wants to do is he wants to make sure that the word that will release to you does not get released through you. I am I leash. I'm trying to stay calm, baby. I'm trying. I'm trying to stay calm. Lord, help me. Your boy trying to stay calm, y'all. But we're going to help you tonight. You have to understand that when God releases a word to you, Satan comes so that that word cannot get released through you. Because you have to understand that Satan knows that if that word gets released through you and come to pass, then you are you 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 are now advancing the kingdom of heaven against the kingdom of darkness. Now, many of you, you may be saying, "Well, prophet, I hear you, but can you show me in the Bible where uh, to to back you up?" And you have to understand, every time I come on to speak or speak anywhere, we first make sure that this is sound doctrine. Or that is and, and uh, that is is written in the Bible, or there's a pattern of it in the Bible. So, let's go back to Genesis. You know when God created Adam and Eve, right? And you know God had had created everything on the earth for him, and He said, you know, let us make man in our image. And God gave Adam and Eve specific instructions. He said, be fruitful, go and multiply, have dominion over the earth, have dominion over all the animals, this and that. He said, you can eat from every tree in the garden. But he gave them one specific instruction. He said, but don't eat from the tree that is in the midst of the garden. For in the day that you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. So God gave them that word, right? They, they received the instruction from God. They received the word from God, right? Help me. Satan knows my word. So Adam and Eve received the instruction and received the word from God on what to do and what not to do. Correct? Yes, correct. So we go on to Genesis chapter 3 and all of a sudden here comes the subtle serpent. Sigh. Make you want to pop lock. He, you know how he's a pop. Uh, 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 uh. The serpent comes and, he, and he's slithering, right? And he approaches Eve. Now look at what the first thing that Satan said to Eve. Did God truly say you can't eat from this tree? Ho, 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 ho. Hold on now. In Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, Satan was Satan was nowhere mentioned of. Satan was nowhere to be. Help me. Satan knows my word. Satan was nowhere to be found in Genesis chapter 1 nor Genesis chapter 2. But once God gave them the word and we now transition into Genesis chapter 3, Satan comes in out of nowhere. And said, did God really say? Now, you have to understand, how did Satan know what God said in Genesis 1, chapter 2, when the Bible doesn't even mention him in 1 and 2? When God releases your word, you are not the only one that hears it. <laughs> you are not the only one that hears that word. So Satan approaches Eve. Did God not say this or did God say this? Oh, go ahead and eat. For in the day you eat, he know that you will be like him. This is that and the third, right? You have to understand when God releases a word, you are not the only one that hears it. You have to understand that Satan comes to steal that word. He comes to steal your authority. Why? Because he want to walk in what was already promised to you. 
You ever wonder how the people in the world are doing so great? Like, God, come on, my God. You, 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 you borderline get a little angry sometimes. You, you get a little mad sometimes. Because you're saying, God, I'm doing everything you said. I'm staying faithful to your word. I'm staying faithful to prayer. I'm staying faithful to your process. But it seems like the people who don't even, ain't even thinking about you, don't even believe in you, they are prospering more than me. Woo! I know I'm not the only one that has felt like that and still feel like that. You have to understand that Satan has the potential and the ability to bless you too. Come on, somebody. I know y'all probably ain't heard that. Look, as, as Bishop Barron Ash used to always say, you don't hear about this in the Bible books, though. <laughs> You have to understand Satan has the potential and the ability to bless you too. Well, prophet, you got to show me that in the Bible. Well, let's look at what Satan told Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness. He told Jesus during all the temptations, he said, if you will bow down to me, took him on a high mountain. And told Jesus, if you would bow down to me, look at all these kingdoms and look at all of their glory. Bow down to me and I will give them to you. You have to understand, Satan has the potential and the ability to bless you too. And this ties into one of my Facebook posts that I made yesterday. You have to understand that everything that is good does not mean that it is God. Come on, somebody, type that in if you're watching your boy. I need you to put, just because it's good does not mean that it's God. I'm hipping somebody. You have to understand just because something is good doesn't mean that it's God. Satan has the ability to bless you too. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Look what look at what Satan tempted Eve with, y'all. God told Eve, God, and he told Adam and Eve, he said, Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you do, you will die. So Satan comes and tempt Eve. What do he tempt Eve with? He tempts Eve with the tree of the good. Woo! How do I know that it was the good that Eve, that caught Eve's attention? Because check this out. The Bible says that when Eve saw what it was that Satan was, what do you do when Satan presenting something to you that you know is good, but you know that it's not God? How do you, how do you, how do you muster the strength to turn away something that you know you want and that you know that is good, but you got to have the inner fortitude to say, I know that is good, but I also know that it's not God. I tell you, I suck. When Satan presented or uh, made his presentation, Satan made his presentation to Eve. And he presented her with the fruit that was on the tree. The Bible says, this is how I know that Eve fell for the deception of what was good. The Bible says that Eve seen what Satan was presenting to her. And she seen that it was good for the taste. Mm. And that it was good and pleasant to the eyes. And that it was something to be desired. Who am I talking to right now? The very thing that Satan was presenting to Eve. It was good. It was pleasant. And it was to be desired. What do you do when you got to discern between what's good and God? Because it's easy. It's easy to discern bad from good. But what do you do when you got to discern good from God? My God, my God. I'm about to turn the lamp off. I already done took a shower and I don't want to get sweaty right now. But I feel this thing. Who am I talking to right now? It's easy to discern bad from good. Oh, we can do that. We all experts at that, baby. <laughs> but what do you do when you got to discern good from God, what do you do when Satan makes a presentation to you and it's good to your taste? Woo! It's pleasant to your eyes and it's something to be desired. But you got to have the strength to say, although it's good and Lord knows I want that thing over there. Although it's good, I know that it's not God. Come on, somebody help me.
Satan knows my word. What do you do when God releases you a prophetic word and you all excited about it? And just as excited as you are about your word, what do you do when Satan is just as excited about you? <laughs> what do you do when, 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 when God releases a prophetic word to you telling you your future and just as you are excited, Satan is just as excited about you? What do you do when Satan's grind for your word is greater than your grind or is equal to your grind. What do you do when your expectation that God has released it to you? What do you do when Satan's expectation is just as greater? My God, my God, my Lord. I am hipping somebody tonight. Help me. Satan knows my word. You have to understand this. The Bible talks about, and I'm getting ready to be done here about in 10 minutes. Can, can y'all bro with me 10 more minutes? If you can, please say, yeah. If you're just not joining, please share the broadcast. Please share the broadcast. Help me. Satan knows my word. Check this out. For the sake of time, I'm going to paraphrase. The Bible talks about the parable of the wheat and tares, right? And Jesus gives the parable saying, a man went out to a field and he sowed seed. <laughs> we working this thing. The Bible says he went out to a field and he sowed seed. And the Bible says that while the men were sleeping, woo, woo, an enemy came and sowed in the very same field. <laughs> what do you do when God releases a prophetic word in your life and he, he releases your destiny? And at the same time, the enemy comes and begins to sow into the very place that God is trying to take you to. My God, my God. The Bible says the man went out and sowed good seed into a field. And he says that while men slept, the enemy came and sowed seed as well. The reason some of you, ooh, ooh, the reason some of you, are always noticing the assignment of the enemy in your life is because that every time God releases a prophetic word to you, you go to sleep. <laughs> we got too many sleeping saints in the body of Christ today. Woo! God gives you a prophetic word and you allow and you allow your excitement to rock you to sleep. Woo! Beware of the dangers of excitement Because <laughs> you can get so excited That it rock you to sleep You can get so excited off the word That you forget to do the work Woo! Woo! Who am I talking to right now? You better share this broadcast I need everybody in America to hear this word tonight Too many people I know I'm hipping somebody yes, work. We working this thing baby Woo! We working this thing right now the Bible says, I'm going I'm to recap real quick. The man went and sowed good seed in the field. While men slept, the enemy came and sowed his seed. And then it said the enemy slithered away before the men could get up. What do you do when God releases a word into your life and you cause your excitement to rock you to sleep? The dangers of excitement because you're so excited about the promise that you, that you forget to begin to start the process. And the Bible says Satan comes in, he sows while you're asleep and before you can wake up he is gone, so by the time your excitement wears off and you realize you have to do the work what the enemy has planted has already begun to come up and now you gotta deal with what the Bible says as the wheat and the tares <laughs> some of you, you wouldn't have to deal with no tares if you would just stay woke, as the activist was saying, the African Amer African American community, <laughs> stay woke. <laughs> I think that's gonna be the next next title of my sermon, baby. Stay woke. <laughs> when God releases your word, baby, stay woke. <laughs> when God tells you where He's about to take you, stay woke. When God gives you your destiny, stay woke. When God tells you the abundance he about to release, stay woke. When God is taking you to your promised land, shit, be my God. stay woke. Stay woke. Help me. Satan knows my word. 
my God, my God. The Bible says the men sow good seed in the ground. And, and he says while they slept, the enemy came and sowed as well. Too many of you are sleeping. And by the time you wake up to realize that you need to, to begin to do the work along with the word, what the enemy has planted has already begun to come up. And now you got to struggle with the tares plus the wheat. But God just don't leave you there, baby. I'm here to tell you because I've been there. Don't, don't think I'm just talking over here just to excite you. No, I'm talking from what I get from the word and I talk from experience. Because I've been there when God has released the word, but I went to sleep on it. I allowed my excitement to rock me to sleep and I didn't do the work. And once I began to do the work, I now have to deal with the struggle of competing with the tares and the wheat. But the Bible says God is just not going to leave you hanging. Even though the enemy comes in and he sows... And the tares come up with the wheat. God says, let them grow together until the harvest time. How do we block out the enemy? How to uproot the enemy seeds? I'm going to get to that, Brother Hughes. I see you. I, look, just as much as I'm preaching and we excited, I'm going to give you some practical tips as well. The Bible says the tares begin to grow with the wheat. And they ask the master, shall we go pluck up the tares? Shall we go pluck up what the enemy has planted? Look at what the master says. He says, no, let the wheat and the tares grow together until harvest time. Woo! He said, let what the enemy planted and let what I have planted grow together until harvest time. What do you do? When the pressure in your promise is just as great as your purpose and the promise of your purpose. Woo! What do you do when God allows the pressure of your purpose to be just as great as the promise of your pressure? And, and, and you're praying and you're fasting, Lord, take it away, remove the tears, remove the pressure. And God says, no, I'm going to let the pressure grow just as great as your promise is. Woo! What do you do? God, why would you allow the pressure to be just as great as my as your promise? Because God says, I want what the enemy planted. I want the pressure. I want the tribulations. I want the trials. I'm going to use that for your good. Romans 8, 28, baby, I am connecting the scriptures right now, Alicia, baby. All things work together for the good. <laughs> For those that love God and are called according to his purpose. See, when, see when, what the enemy thought that he was planting, what the enemy thought that he was sowing, what he was really doing, he was really helping you get cultivated. Good God. Mighty. Sometimes, God, sometimes you have to understand that your adversary is really your ally. Good God Almighty. What do you do when, 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 when God uses Satan to really be your ally? Everything working together for the good. Let the wheat and the tar grow together. Let what Satan did, but also let what I'm doing grow together. Because I'm going to let what Satan did work out for your good. You, you need to understand that Satan is nothing but your employee. Who am I talking to, man? Satan is nothing but an employee. <laughs> and God, he's the CEO, the chief executive officer, and he's made you the president. <laughs> you have to understand, God will allow what the enemy planted to grow with what God is planting just so he can use what the enemy planted to cultivate you. You have to understand, Satan is not killing you. He's just cultivating you, and he don't even know it. The Bible says if Satan would have knew that he was killing the Lord of glory. <laughs> he, he don't, Satan don't even know what he's doing when he's coming after you. Help me. Satan knows my word. Help me, Satan knows my word. Let's wrap this thing up pretty quick. This is the basic foundation of the scripture I want to show you. My computer is freezing up right now. But for the sake of time, you guys know what the parable of the sword is about, right? 
in the Bible, Jesus gives a parable. He talks about how uh, the man went out the parable of the sower. We're transitioning from the parable of the wheat and the tares to the parable of the, parable of the sower. We're talking about Satan knowing your word. Help me. Satan knows my word. The Bible says this. Jesus said a man goes out and sows good seed into a field. And he said uh, uh, that when the man sowed the seed, he said the first response to it, the birds came and ate it up. Then he said some seed fell on stony ground. And he, and he said some seed fell on good ground and it produced 30, 60, and 100 fold, right? So the seed that the man sowed, Jesus said the birds came and ate it. And then he said that uh, 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 some the, the second set of seed it fell on stony ground. The third set of seed it fell among the uh, 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 it, it fell among the wheat and the thistles. But the fourth seed fell on good ground. And then Jesus began to explain the parable. And here is where we go to help me. Satan knows my word. Jesus said that the seed that the man sown is the word of God. Woo! And he say, the birds that came and ate the seed, he said, that is the enemy. That is Satan. That is the evil one. And he said that when, uh, when the word of God is sown, he says that the enemy comes to snatch the word out of the heart of the recipient. Woo! Help me. Satan knows my word. When God releases a prophetic word to you, you have to understand that the enemy and every plot of the enemy is sitting on standby, baby. And it's on standby waiting for that word to get released. Because what Satan wants to do, he wants to snatch that word out of your heart. He does not want that word to be rooted in you. He comes to snatch that word out of your heart. Because he, what was released to you, he does not want it to get released through you. Help me, somebody. Satan knows my word. It says that when he releases the word, the enemy comes immediately. It's a shame. Oh, I, I, look, what I'm about to say, I'm about to step on some toes and I'm not trying to hurt nobody. I'm just trying to help you. If you're just not joining, share the broadcast, please. It says that when the word of God is sown, Satan comes immediately to snatch that word. It's a shame that Satan operates and goes after the word of God quicker than the saints. Good God. I'm about to do some push-ups in this thing right now. Y'all is not feeling. I'm like, hey, is y'all feeling your boy? Let me let, let me see somebody put a 100 in the comments or, or put some fire in the comment if this thing is if this thing is blessing you right now. Who am I talking to? I'm not trying to hurt nobody. I promise you, I'm just trying to help you, baby. Sugar pie, honey bun. I'm just trying to help you, king. The Bible says that when God, that when the word of God is sown, the enemy comes to snatch that word immediately. It's a shame that Satan moves on the word of God quicker than some of the saints. Good God Almighty, Miss Alabama Kandi. Help me. Satan knows my word. Now, for Brother Hughes and for those as well, our, our sister Hughes, Hughes let's get to some practical application. Because I said the five E's. We want to be we want to be effective. I believe we're accomplishing that. We want to be exciting. We're doing it, entertaining. We're doing it and engaging. Because y'all talking back to me. Now let's get to the education part, and I'm gonna tone it down. I'm gonna tone it down. I'm going to just talk to you right now. I want to make sure we're cooking for everybody. Because I know a lot of people, we love the hype. Sometimes people just want you to talk to them. So I'm going to do that right now. With the parable of the sword. Help me. Satan knows my word. Help me. Satan knows my word. So I want to talk about three quick things real quick. How to, uh, and, and this is not of all, uh, uh, all inclusive list. These are just three quick things out of this, out of the context of the scripture that I'm using for what I'm talking about right now. Okay. There are many things you can do to protect yourself, to protect the word that God has released to you. But I just want to talk about three that I got from out of the parable of the sword. So 
The Bible says, once again, when God sows the word, the enemy comes to snatch. Hey, hey, Kia. When God sows the word, the enemy comes to snatch that word immediately. And I begin to say that it's a shame how Satan will operate on the word of God quicker and faster than the saints. So Jesus goes on to explain the parable, right? I'm going to talk a little fast for the sake of time. Jesus goes on to explain the parable. He said the first set of seed, he says that it fell on stony ground. And he said the stony ground represents the people that didn't have the, the, uh, the people that were that were not rooted in the word. You have to understand that when God releases a word unto your life, you have to be rooted in that word, man. You got to be rooted. You got to you, you can't let the enemy come and snatch it out of your heart. You got to allow that word, that vision. You got to allow it to get in your heart and you got to you got to meditate on that word. That's why God told Joshua. He said, Joshua, he said the the true ingredients to being successful, Joshua. He said, meditate on my word day and night. Don't go don't veer from the left to the right. Stay in my word. When God releases a prophetic word to you, you got to keep that word before your eyes. You got to keep that word in your ears. You got to block out everything that is contrary to the word. This is practical tip number one. You got to protect that word. You got to stay rooted. He said the word fell on stony ground represents didn't have no root. It's a shame that we got a lot of people in the body of Christ that have no backbone. Woo. And the reason that a lot of people haven't been blessed is because they refuse to be built. Woo. Lord, help me to stay calm and just teach right now. <laughs> Because I want to run and shout this day right now. He said the seed fell on stony ground. Ground that didn't have no root. You have to understand when God releases a prophetic word, you have to stay rooted. You have to develop a backbone for that word. And you and, and, and for a lot of us, the reason a lot of people haven't been blessed is because they refuse to be built. They refuse to get rooted. They refuse to keep that word in them. They refuse to keep that word before their eyes. They refuse to keep that word before their ears. And sometimes you got to keep that word even before people and put it before people. Refute. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So that's number one. You got to stay rooted. That's how you stay rooted in the word. Keep it. Keep it before your eye gate. Keep it in your ear gate. Keep that word in your heart. OK, when God releases a prophetic word and you know it's of God, write it down. And every morning when you get up, uh, 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 speak that word back to your inner man. Speak it in your inner man and speak it out loud. Make declarations about it. Cause you gotta understand your destiny is 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 you 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 cannot you you cannot afford to not walk in your destiny. So you gotta do whatever you gotta do to keep your expectation high. You gotta do whatever you gotta do to keep that word bubbling on the inside of you. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, as you're allowing the word to get rooted in you more and more, you need to surround yourself with people. Uh, 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 you guys uh, type that in for me. Number one, stay rooted. I see my queen Leisha has did it, uh, typed it in already. But if you're still watching, let me know that you're still rocking with you, boy. I promise I'm getting ready to get uh, getting ready to end. You got to stay rooted. That's number one. Can you guys type that in for me? And if you're watching and haven't shared it, please share it. Please share the broadcast. That's number one. Help me. Satan knows my word. How do I protect my word from letting Satan snatch it out of my heart? You got to stay rooted. Type that in for me. Stay rooted. There we go. Elizabeth, stay rooted. There we go. Okay, let's keep going on. Number two, you got to surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with like-minded people. What do I mean by this? The Bible talks about, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and stay calm because I feel a, I feel fire right now. The Bible talks about when Elizabeth and Mary got pregnant. God told Elizabeth she was going to be pregnant with John. He was going to be the way maker, prepare the way for Jesus. And then Mary got pregnant with Jesus. So Mary and Elizabeth, pay attention. I'm, 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 I'm giving you a practical nugget. Surround yourself with like-minded people. Mary and Elizabeth was, was both pregnant. Babe, I'm trying to just talk calm, Leash. She did this. She said, <laughs> Mary and Elizabeth was both pregnant. First of all, you need to surround yourself with people that is pregnant with purpose just as great as you are. 
Woo. Surround yourself with people that is excited. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Pastor Lynn, is on, and he talked early. If you have, if you didn't check out his face, his Facebook live uh, uh, early there about passion, go check him out, please. He, but he talked about passion. Surround yourself with like-minded people that's carrying the same amount of passion for the word, just like you. The Bible says that Mary and Elizabeth was both pregnant with something, and that when Mary went to go visit Elizabeth. The Bible says that the babe in Elizabeth's womb leaped at the voice of Mary. Good God Almighty. Surround yourself with people that is going to make what's in you leap. Woo! Good God, I'm trying to stay calm right now, y'all. <laughs> Surround yourself with people that's going to make you leap. Good God Almighty. Who am I talking to right now? You have to surround yourself with like-minded people. When Mary went to go and visit Elizabeth, uh, visit Elizabeth, the baby that was in Elizabeth's womb leaked when she heard the voice of somebody else that was pregnant with destiny as well. Surround yourself with people that is pre not only pregnant with purpose, but has the same amount of passion as you do. Because when you begin to surround yourself with those like-minded people, y'all begin to make what is in each other leap even further. You begin to make that excitement get cultivated even further. Oh, my God. Woo. Surround yourself with like-minded people, okay? Get loose. Wake them up. That's right, Brother DuPont. Let's keep going on. The third thing. The parable of the sower. Jesus said that when the word was sown, that it fell among the thorns and the weeds and it tangled the word. And he began to explain that the thorns and the weeds, it represented, he said, these are the people that allow the worldly cares and material things to come and tangle up their word. You have to understand that when God releases a prophetic word to you, that you have to understand that fear is going to try and creep in. Doubt is going to try and creep in. Unbelief is going to try and creep in. But you cannot let those things choke the word that God has put within you. You, you, you receive the prophetic word and, and, and it's released to you. And you're, you're doing what number one is. You're staying rooted. You're staying rooted in the word. You're doing what number two is. You're surrounding yourself with like-minded people. But then you get to this third thing where now, because time is passing, and and you're you're not seeing what it really is you, you really want to see, although God has promised it. You begin to let fear, doubt, worry, and unbelief creep in. It begins to it begins to choke up that word that is within you. You got to make sure that you do not allow those things to creep in and choke up your word. The Bible also says that people that that people let the pursuit of material things choke up the word. Look, you have to understand that there is no material possession on earth that is more valuable than the word of God in you. Who am I talking to right now? It says they allow the pursuit of material things, the pursuit of worldly things to choke up the vision, to, to, to choke up the word. And too many people, they are allowing ambition to hinder their assignment who am i talking to right now let me break this down there is nothing wrong with ambition no you need to have ambition after god's word but you have to be sure that your ambition is not misplaced mm. too many people have allowed misplaced ambition to hinder their assignment because they get so focused on the promise of God's word that they begin to try to make the manifestation happen out of their own strength. But let me tell you something, sugar pie, honey bun. Let me tell you something right now. Your own strength will never be greater than God's favor. You have to understand that what you can accomplish in your own grind can never accomplish more than God's grace. Stay calm, Watts. Stay calm. I don't even got no water right now. Mm. I feel the cotton in my mouth about to come on. I'm about to start spitting out uh, large t-shirts up in this thing. So, number one, you got to stay rooted. Number two, surround yourself with like-minded people. People that's going to make what's in you leap just as it was with Elizabeth and Mary. 
Number three, you cannot let fear, doubt, unbelief, and weary choke up the word. You cannot let the pursuit, your own pursuits, choke up your purpose. The pursuit of material things and even the pursuit of the promise of God. Because you have to understand, as I just said. What you can accomplish in your own grind will never be stronger than God's grace. What you try to do with your own hands will never be stronger than God's favor. God can cause by one word, by one word, he can cause something to happen in your life in one day that it would take your own strength to accomplish in 10 years. That's why you have to be in a position to always hear what God is saying to do. Because His your grind, there you go, Dr. Talisha. Thank you, baby. I need your grind is never stronger than God's grace. Your grind is important, but it's never stronger than God's grace. You go in the grace flow, as uh, my brother-in-law Anthony Andrews would say. You walk in the grace flow, and you let your grind supplement the grace flow. When God gives you an assignment, and he gives you the strategy, now you attach your grind to what God said, not to what you want to do. Because anything you accomplish in your own strength, you're going to have to maintain it by your own strength. And truth be told, we are not built to carry all that God has for us in our own strength. So many, so many people have died by way of glory. God. So many people have allowed their purpose to die because they're trying to carry the weight of the glory in their own strength when you wasn't built for it. That's why you got to stay in God's grace because God's grace has the capacity to contain God's glory. And when you in God's grace, you can contain the glory. <sighs> Help me. Satan knows my word. And the last thing, this is where it gets to the manifestation. So the parable of the sword says that the man sows the seed and the enemy comes to snatch it immediately. And he gave the examples of, you know, seed was sown on stony ground. Seed was sown on uh, among thorns and weeds. But then he says, and we're getting ready to end. Then he says, please share the broadcast if you had it. Then he says that some seed, there's a different type of ground that this seed fell on. And I believe that everybody that's watching me right now and that will, will, will watch, you are this type of ground. He said the last set of seed fell among good ground. Yeah, yeah. And it was this, this good ground that caused results to come into play. It was this good ground that began to produce some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. You see, when you stay rooted, number one, when you surround yourself with like-minded people, number two, when you keep yourself free from fear, weary, doubt, unbelief, and the pursuit of worldly things, number three, then you begin to understand that you are now that good ground. And when you are that good ground, the word of God begins to produce in you and it begins to produce out of you. Psalm 30, Psalm 60, and Psalm 100 fold. Now, I know everybody is saying, yes, I'm the good ground. That is what I want. But you have to be careful. You have to make sure that you are prepared for the criticism of being a good ground. Woo! Because I'm finna tell you something. Pay attention. We getting ready to we getting ready to end it. Because although everybody could be good ground, everybody good ground is not the same level. <laughs> you good ground. I'm good ground. You good ground. They're a good ground. But everybody good ground is not the same level. How? Because it says it in the, in the end of the scripture. He says that although it fell on good ground, some produced 30. Some produced 60. Some produced 100. And you have to understand that whatever you produce, you have to be satisfied with the grace that God has caused you to walk in. Woo! Because too many people, although you are a good ground and although you are producing results, if you're not careful, the enemy will come in and cause you to begin to compare yourself because you're producing 30 and he will cause you to begin to hate on those that's producing 60 and 100. God. 
So although you're producing a harvest, your heart is still misplaced and still not right. Because you are allowing the enemy to come in and you're beginning to compare results. And the Bible says don't compare yourself to one another. That is not wise. Whatever ground God has graced you to be, you walk and be content with that ground. If God is only giving you the grace to produce 34, baby, I'm finna produce 34 like I ain't produced 34 before. If God has only graced you to produce 60, I'm finna produce 60 till I'm my dying breath. If God has graced you to produce 100, we finna keep it 100. I'm going all out. And just because you might not be graced to produce a hundred does not give you the right to get mad and hate on those that's producing a hundred. Be satisfied with your 30. That's what God graced you to produce. Your 30 is just as equal to the hundred. Why? Because at the end of the day, what matters to God is obedience. <laughs> Hear me when I say this. This is going to set a lot of you free. I can hear the chains breaking. Success in God's eyes is not determined by numbers or material possessions, but is determined by your obedience. Woo! If God has only graced you to produce 30 and you produce your 30, well, then God is going to reward you the same as he's rewarding the one that produced 100 because you were obedient and faithful with your 30. Who am I talking to right now? We got too many people that's trying to do, do we got we got too many people in the body of Christ trying to compare their harvest. God, why are we comparing harvest? Let's just be thankful that we're producing a harvest. Who cares if I'm a millionaire and you only at six figures? Girl, baby, you better manage those six figures and you better you better be faithful with those six figures. Just as great because God does not see success by numbers and material things. He, he determines your success by your obedience. So if God says, Prophet Watts, I only graced you to produce 30 fold. But Sister Elizabeth, Sister Kia, Sister Alicia... Brother Marcus, I graced you to produce a hundred. Well, you know what? When I produce my 30 and, and you produce your 100, let's come together and celebrate for the production, baby. Let's come and celebrate each other's obedience to the word in God. And let's eat and, and, and walk together in this harvest together. You have to be content with the ground that God has graced you to win on. Let's wrap this thing up. Guys, I just want to come on tonight because I know that we're in a season right now where I believe. Well, I know that we're all believing for some great and mighty things. We all have great expectations. And I got a, I feel a, I feel such a, a, a great expectation in my spirit, man, like no other man. And I just, and I just, you ever, you ever be at a point and, 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 and if this is you, just type me too. <laughs> you have you ever you, you ever been in a space where you just you you can just feel the manifestation of God's word about to just I'm talking about it's it's right on the edge. You just know that any day now this thing is about to the floodgates is about to come open. And you just sitting on edge. You, you, you know how it is when people begin to race and, and they're anticipating the sound. Ooh, I, I'm, see, when you're prophetic, God begins to speak and you begin to go down a whole different lane. But I got to go. I'm going to just give you, you. You know how it is in a race and the runners are, are expecting the sound. The gunshot pop. They're expecting the sound, and they and they and they and, and they got this little jump with them, but they, but they're just waiting for the right time for it. Dude, is, is there anybody out there right now? You you're just like those runners. You 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 ready to jump? You ready to jump? You ready to jump because you're anticipating the sound of manifestation. God, I'm anticipating something. And you have to understand that you have to keep that anticipation and that expectation. You have to keep that thing lively as we recap. Help me. Satan knows my word. You have to understand. We're getting ready to end. Stay with me five more minutes. When God releases the word, 
you are not the only one that hears that word. I told them in the beginning for those that joined uh, later in the broadcast and didn't catch the beginning. Help me. Satan knows my word. When God gave Adam and Eve instructions in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, Satan was not Satan was nowhere mentioned. He was nowhere present. But comes along in Genesis chapter three. Satan comes telling Eve what God told them. Why? Because Satan heard what God told them. Then we went to the parable about when when the word of God is sown, the enemy comes to snatch that word immediately. When you hear a word, you got to protect that word. How do you protect that word? You got to stay rooted. You got to keep that word and that vision and that dream before your eye gates and your ear gates. Number two, surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with people that's going to make what's in you leap because what's in them. When Mary went and visited Elizabeth, the babe and Elizabeth leaped at the voice of Mary. Surround yourself with like-minded people that, that, that's going to cause you and you're going to cause them that what's in them to leap. Number three, you got to stay rooted. Number three, you got to stay rooted. You can't, you can't, you can't let the, the cares of this world and, and, and worldly ambitions come and choke your word. You got to stay rooted. You got to have tunnel vision. And you do all that so you can be that good ground that the seed fall on and produce a harvest. And as you begin to produce a harvest, if God graced you to produce 30 fold, be thankful for what God graced you in. Don't look at somebody that's producing 60 or 100 fold and get mad at them. Well, why, well, 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 God, why you, God, why, why, why you allowing them to be a multimillionaire and me just a millionaire? What? Come on, man. <laughs> who, who, <laughs> come on. Don't, comp don't compare your results and your harvest to somebody else's harvest. Walk in what God has graced you to produce and experience. Amen. Amen. Let's pray this thing on out. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time. And I pray that right now, Father Yahweh, in the name of your son, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray that this word that was released, that it, would, it impacted the hearts of those that watched it and those that will watch. I pray, Father, that the enemy would not snatch this word out of their hearts, but I pray that they will protect this word. And not only this word, but that they will protect the destiny and the purpose and the vision that you have put within them. I pray that they will stay in your word, Father. I pray that they will stay rooted. I pray that they will surround themselves with like-minded people. I pray that they will stay focused and that their, their uh, discernment and that their focus will remain lit. <laughs> it will remain on high. And I pray, Lord, and I speak that every assignment that the enemy try to do against each and every one that's watching this, those that will watch, and even those that may never watch this, but those that are walking in your purpose. Now, I not only, Father, pray for those that's watching this and will watch, but I pray for the body of Christ as a whole. I pray, Father, that we would not let the enemy come and steal our word, but we would stay hold to it. We would keep our hands gripped on that word, and that we would walk out your purpose. We would embrace your process. We would embrace your principles. We would embrace your time and we would embrace the developmental stage. We would embrace the fact that we have to be built for the blessing and that, Lord God, we will walk in everything you have for us to walk in. I speak that no weapon formed against your people shall prosper and every lying tongue, as Isaiah say, it shall be rooted and cut off. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Most High. So, Lord, we thank you for this time right now. And I speak your blessings and your goodness upon everyone, Lord God. Not only those that watch this live. But those are watching by replay and the body of Christ as a whole. I speak that your favor and your goodness will begin to overshadow them and will begin to tackle them. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach. And we speak that it is so. And it is so. Amen. Amen. Guys, look, I thank y'all, man. I thank you guys for tuning in and, and watching the live tonight. I just wanted to come on. I pray that this live encouraged you guys. And um, I pray that you was impacted by it and that I said something that would cause you to, to walk a little bit farther in your destiny. Be not weary and well doing. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Amen. Guys, keep your notifications on. Your boy is finna start. I'm, I'm starting tonight. I promise you, you will see me back on Facebook Live a lot more often. If I got to make a, a pre-announcement before I go live, just so you guys can have time to see it. I want you guys to come and join me. Come and rock out with your boy, man, as we as we deliver these now and other messages. I promise that it's going to be effective. It's going to be educational. It's going to be entertaining. It's going to be exciting. And you better believe it's going to be engaging. 
And anytime I have an event where I have to go speak live in the city, I will post that. And I want you guys to come and experience God in live and in person. If you like what we do over the phone, baby, you going to love us in person, baby. All right. So this is what we always say. This isn't the beginning. This here. Yeah, it is forever. Together is now never. Dream big, work hard, and live easy. easy. I'll see y'all next time, all right? Y'all have a good night. Peace.